everyone. So I'm here today to do my wrap up for September. Um, and I have read quite a few books this month. I have read 14 books, but only 2,352 pages. So basically, I was participating in short September and all of the books that I read, or most of the books I read, were very short. Um, so in terms of page number, I have actually read probably a little bit less than my usual. Um, I also listened to one and a half hours of audiobook. Um, we will get into that. Um, the moods are mostly reflective, as emotional, challenging, informative, sad and adventurous. So kind of what I normally read, I normally read reflective sad books. Um, adventurous is a little bit of a extra one, like it doesn't always appear, but uh, there was one book this month that uh, was label as adventures. In terms of pace, 79% um, of what I read was slow, 14% uh, medium and 7% fast. Uh, that's also kind of um, normal. I mean, probably medium is more prevalent in, in on average, but yeah, most of the, re the things I read are slow. In terms of page number, 85% of what I read was less than 300 pages. As I said, short September, um, actually most of the books I read for short September were less than 200 pages. I wish that uh, Storygraph had a little bit more detail on the number of pages. So something like less than 200 and then between 200, 300, between 300 and 400, stuff like that. But that's not the case. So they are all lumped here in the less than 300 pages and then 15% were between 300 and 499. So even the, the books that I didn't read for short September were also not super long. Um, and then the audiobook length, so as I said, I read one audiobook was less than eight hours. It was actually less than two hours as well. Um, so that's the one. Um, and then in between fiction and non-fiction, so I read 85% fiction and 15% non-fiction. Um, I have noticed the last few months that I have not been reading as much non-fiction as I normally do. Normally it's around 25%. Um, there's nothing particularly bad about it or something I want to change, but it's something I've noticed. Um, and then in terms of genre, literary is by far the biggest. Um, then short story, science fiction, poetry and historical. Uh, that's uh, Poetry is um, a new one. <laughs> I normally don't read poetry, but because of short September I ended up picking up a couple of poetry collections and also short stories. Um, that's also because of um, part of Part of it is because of uh, short September, part of it is because of Read Around the World project. Um, but yeah, that's uh, in general, it's it's fairly common. And then when it comes to um, format, so 50% is digital, 43% uh, is print, and 7% uh, is audio. Um, there's actually, I think, one book that is marked as print, but it's actually digital because I couldn't find the digital edition in Storygraph and I didn't care enough to put it in. Um, but yeah, that's roughly half and half. Um, which it's okay. I would like it to be more print, as I said, but I'm also uh, trying to go through all of the ebooks that I have left and uh, finish those up so that that is clear, so it makes sense. Um, and then in terms of language, everything that I read except one book was basically English. One of the books I read for short September was in Portuguese. It was for Read Around the World project for Timor Leste and I couldn't find it in any other language, so... Um, yes, that happened. Um, and then if we look at the number of pages, actually, uh, this is kind of interesting because at the beginning of the month I was um, going through books quite quickly. I think the shorties helped me go into a flow. Um, I was a bit of a slump uh, last couple of months, but at the beginning of the month I, I got um, into the shorties and it really helped me make progress. And then uh, like the second half of the of the uh, month that went down a lot again but that's just because we were on holidays and I just didn't have time not because I didn't want to read so I think 
Share this September really helped me with um, getting back into my reading and I'm very grateful for that. Um, so yeah, those are the stats for this month. Let's now go into the book. So I'm going to go through the books a little bit faster because I, I have read most of this, as I said, for Short of September and I do have blogs of Short of September. So I will link those blogs down below if you want more details. Um, but the first book I finished was Foster by Claire Keegan. I thought it was okay. I don't kind of get the hype over Claire Keegan um, but yeah it was fine that was the audiobook that I, I read and then the second book I finished was My Uros by Emily Ther Killing which was for um, Read Around the World project for I think um, it was not Samoa it was some islands in uh, Micronesia I think it was Micronesia um, and it's a poetry collection. I have another poetry collection of the same area, so I don't know if that's um, because it's very common in that area of the world to do poetry rather than novels or just because that's happened to be what I found. Uh, but this was uh, actually really, it's like kind of poetry that I like, so it's very rebellious and it's very um, like social justice oriented rather than kind of feeling oriented. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed this one. Um, then I read Sultana's Dream by uh, Rayeka Sakhawat Hassain, um, which is a short story actually. Um, it, it comes into like a small big like a small book but an actual book but it's only like 15 20 pages of a story itself and the rest is like context and introductions and stuff because it's quite a, a classic in Bangladeshi literature and it's like a utopia of like a woman visits this place where she realizes that women are like the ones going out the home and they keep the husbands locked up because they deem them as dangerous. Uh, it is from like a hundred years ago, so I understand the times were different, but it really shows, like it hadn't aged particularly well, I would say, so I didn't particularly enjoy that one. Um, then I read Mother's Beloved, uh, short stories from Laos by Othin Bon Javong. Um, and this was fine. Um, the book actually was uh, written in a way in which like one side of of it was in English and the other side was in the language that they speak in Laos. Kind of the, the script kind of looked like Thai, but I'm pretty sure it's probably not Thai, but it's related to it. I don't know. Anyway, um, so it was half of the book was in English and I could read that half and the stories were okay if they give uh, a context of the culture of Laos but um, as I said many times in this channel I'm not super into short stories so yeah this was just fine for me then the next book I read was A Yep Yard Talk by uh, Kathy Yetnil Kijiner um, and this is for um, um, Marshall Islands and this was as I said this, it was kind of similar to my Uros um, it is really really good it's poetry as well um, and it's um, it also covers a lot about racism and the uh, treatment of Micronesians in general and how they are treated as less when they go to places like Japan or the US even though some of those islands do belong to some of those countries and um, the culture of these islands and how important it is to them and how overlooked it often is and I really really enjoyed it this is like probably one of my favorite uh, books from um, from this month definitely a win for me um, then the next one I finished was Chronica Duna Travesia and Boca do Aitic Funam, which is translated as um, The Crossing by Luis Cardoso, which is, as I said, from Timor Leste, and I read this in Portuguese, even though I don't speak Portuguese, I could understand. Um, it was very nostalgic, uh, and it was a lot, also, like it kind of connected different Portuguese places so um, obviously Timor-Leste was a big part of it but also Lisbon and Portugal in general but also like Angola um, there were like this connection of all the places that used to be Portuguese and 
yeah it was interesting um then the next one i finished was one that was not for short of september and it was the dead wonder in the desert by roland saisenbayev and i read this for um reader in the world project for uh, kazakhstan if i remember correctly and it was um set in the 1980s and it's about the aral sea drying out and like the fishing communities around this sea what did they do some of them went to cities some of them tried to stay there and become farmers some of them were just very confused about what to do and within all of these there is also the russian uh, control and the russian occupation that they have to deal with and how many of these people um blame the russians for why the um the sea dried out because they did a lot of irrigation around and uh, the um the rivers that were going to the aral sea did get used to do irrigation around so they there was not as much water reaching the sea itself and that's kind of how, where it started to dry out um so that was very interesting to read the writing was also kind of poetic there were snippets of poems and newspapers and things like that um the only thing i would say is that i found it very very dense um it, this was the first book i picked up and uh, it's like the sixth book i finished or something it took me a really long time to um got through and because it's set in this small community we do follow all the people in the community and there's a lot of people and uh yeah i found it a little bit difficult to follow sometimes so just take that in mind if you are planning to read that one um then the next one i finished was territory of light by yuko tsushima um and this one was about a mother and a daughter and the the daughter is like two years old three years old um and the mother just le well her, her and the dad of this girl broke up they are separated not divorced yet but separated because of issues that they had <laughs> and um and the mom is trying to build a, a new life for herself find an apartment um like with her job and the daycare and kind of juggle all of that by herself without any help and i found this quite relatable in many ways because she is getting into this negative spiral and she often gets very judged by the people around her as a mother um which i think it's very common <laughs> to judge mothers for what they do even though you don't know the whole of the situation um so i found it quite interesting and relatable in some ways um and i think this is quite a a good book especially if you're a mother uh, the next one i finished was the director's niche by ismail kadare um, and this is a, an albanian book and it's about it's it's set in the ottoman empire and it's about so there's this boy that his job is to take care of the on the heads of traitors and there is this actual like physical niche where they put them and it's his job is to take care of them so that they don't rot um and it was i mean it was kind of disturbing it was super super poetic um and i i think it's a good book i think it's very well written uh, it was just not my particular cup of tea um so it was i wouldn't i i would i wouldn't say i enjoyed it as much as i think other people can enjoy it i think it's a good book but it was just not for me <laughs> uh, and then the next book i read was the long drive by Simon jones um and this is um kind of dystopia not dystopia it's about a community of farmers in wales and there is a, a very long drive and it's about this family uh, trying to survive and trying to deal with the animals even though the animals are acting weird because the the weather is weird and they don't know when the rain is gonna come and it's kind of like it has a feeling of verboding and a feeling on dystopia but it's actually just like a dry <laughs> which happens now as well so um yeah it it was it was a lot quieter than i thought it was gonna be but it was still quite interesting and um it made me think about uh, the uh 
the way in which like we often read dystopians and we think oh this is never going to happen but this is actually not a dystopian but it feels like one because the kind of the same kind of things happen in dystopians but it, this is actual potential real life. And then the next book I read was The Blue Sky by Kelsan Xiang. This was again for Rita on the World Project for um, Mongolia and it's about a family uh, of of people in Mongolia and we follow mostly the the child and he has a very strong connection with his grandma and his dog and we follow like what happened to both of them uh, from his perspective and how the culture feeds those feelings within themselves. Um, it was interesting to explore that that culture as well. It had a lot of cultural elements and also the introduction, uh, the translator did the introduction about how that fits within Mongolian culture, which, yeah, I found quite interesting. And the next book I finished was Invisible Cities by Italo Calvino. Um, and this is like snippets of conversations, imagine conversations between Marco Polo and someone else and he describes the cities that he has seen and he has created. And I have mixed feelings about this because I liked the writing and the descriptions and like it was very meta and very, um, yeah, very aware of itself. Uh, but the message I think I got, I didn't like. So yes, uh, I don't know how to write this. I don't know how what to say about this because I don't know if I'm interpreting it correctly um so yeah that's that's that one <laughs> and then the next book i read was to be totally fortunate by becky chambers which is um like a cozy sci-fi if that's a thing um it's about this group of people that are in a mission in space and it starts very slow about their everyday life in space um, and it goes a little bit deeper into their feelings about going home or not going home and stuff like that and also because of things that happen within the plot um, that becomes a bigger and bigger aspect of this life of this book um, I thought it was okay. Um, I like Becky Chambers. I have read some of the, her other books and I don't think this one is the strongest just because one of the things I enjoy the most about Becky Chambers is like how rich their worlds are and how rich the characters are and even though here the characters were still explored a lot, they're still humans and there is not as much um, as much um, world development just because there's no space um, so I would say this is not her strongest but it was still enjoyable and then the last book I read this month was an eye novel by Minae Musumura um, and this was a, a memoir of Minae Musumura who moved to the US as a teenager I believe um, and she ended up studying languages and wanting to write a novel in Japanese and this novel was originally written both in Japanese and English there is like intertwined and in the English version which is the one I read they have put like a different font on the parts that are in English in the original because language is a really big part of this book um, and the way that she uh, she thinks about Japanese and why she will write in Japanese even though she has been working and reading in, in English more because of the fact that she lives in the US and she grew up partly in the US um, and that like imbalance that she has within herself also there she has a uh, a sister that is a sculpture and it's a little bit um, struggling with her, her mental health and how her their relationship is and also the, her relationship with uh, her mom and her dad. Her mom uh, went to Singapore with her lover at some point and her dad is in a care home because he's, I think he has like Alzheimer's or something and he's uh, really uh, not getting better. Um, so this is kind of like what the book does um, and as I said the main thing that it focuses on is language and how we use language and um, 
what language means to it, at everyone and what means in within society because there's for example a conversation at some point of if she had written this book in English it would actually be a lot more marketable because there are just more people that read English than Japanese um, so then if you write in Japanese it will have to be translated and also the fact that it, are there Japanese people interested in this kind of story or is this more of a story that you tell to Americans for example and if that's the case then it will make more sense to write it in English all these considerations of which language to use with a, for a novel if you have that choice um, and I really enjoyed that exploration of of language and what it means. Um, but I will have to say also a lot of the no the novel or the book. It's more of a autobiography than a novel, but it's called an I novel. So anyway, um, uh, the ma a lot of the novel is also about the family and her life and her daily thoughts, and it's very 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 detailed in every of those things. And I found it a little bit tedious to, to read. I didn't find the main person, Minae, particularly um, relatable in any way. And some of the things she said, I was like, oh, really? That's like at some point, for example, she says, like, you know, our mom always wanted to find us Japanese uh Japanese um, husbands. And we actually never thought that we might need to make our own living uh, because we also always assume we were going to get married, things like that. And I understand that this book was written, written in the 90s um, and it has just semi-recently been uh, translated, but it's, it's an older book. So some of those um, thoughts probably come from that perspective. But still, like the 90s, I was born earlier than that so i i'm not of the same generation but i'm not that far off and that's those kind of thoughts i found very alien to me uh so yeah i would say that i enjoy the parts about language but i didn't enjoy the other parts like the memory parts so yeah at the end it, it became a little bit tedious to go through because just because I was not particularly invested in the lives of these people. So yeah, those are all the books that I read this month. Um, let me know if you have read any of these, if you have any thoughts of any of these um, or what you read this month. I would love to know and until next video, bye!